So one thing I want to do is want to ask uh, Charlie um, a question, and I'm going to try to group a lot of questions that were, were asked, and it's all around different drugs that people might be on and, and the impact of the vaccine. And, and let me just preface the question around Clarity IBD looked at infliximab and betalizumab. So infliximab is Remicade, or it's biosimilars like Inflectra, Renflexix. Um, betalizumab is in Kibio. Both of those medications are, are infusions. And I think that's one of the reasons that they were, were chosen. Charlie, can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but because people going to infusions, it's, there's very easy access to getting blood samples and studying them as compared to many of the medications that patients are on, like Humira or Adalimumab, which is an anti-TNF therapy like infliximab or Remicade, but is a self-injection. So it wasn't studied specifically in Clarity IBD. Now it has been studied in, in, a, in other um, studies, but again, self-injection medications like Stelarus to Kinemab wouldn't have been included. And then oral medications, like if you're on a 5-ACA or mesalamine, weren't studied as well. And so I just wanted to clarify the reason why, you know, you know, infliximab and betalizumab were, were chosen. And Charlie, could you give us a little bit of thought on what your thinking is around other medications? First, um, do you think that anti-TNF has a class effect? Meaning that, do you, do, can we extrapolate data from Clarity IBD to people on Humira or Symphony? And then what do you think about drugs that have, have not been studied at all mechanistically, like a drug like Stelera or Celgence or Tocosin and Abbott? So thanks, Gil. So let me just first um, clarify um, the, the rationale behind the study. So we were really um, testing the hypothesis that anti-TNF drugs would have this effect. Um, and yes, we went for an intravenous drug because patients were coming to the hospital, bearing in mind that for a lot of the last year, most patients have not come to the hospital. You know, we've been doing clinics by phone or via telemedicine, et cetera. And whilst that's been opening up a lot more in, in recent months, I think that was very shrewd for clarity. So people were coming to the hospital. And the beauty, as I said before, of doing infliximab with vedalizumab as a control was that they're coming at roughly um, similar intervals, et cetera, over time. Um, we have made allowances, of course, for patients switching um, to subcutaneous intivio, which, we, which we've been doing over the last six months, too. So let's look at other drugs. I think that this is very likely to be a class effect for anti-TNFs. There's no real reason, I, I think, why it should not be. So I would say, whilst we can't say for sure, it is very probable that what we're seeing for infliximab also applies to adalimumab, Humira, or biosimilars, of course, um, and to golimumab or symphony. Does it um, apply to immunomodulators? Well, we know that it does in combination with um, an anti-TNF agent. And also, we see an effect in combination with vedalizumab. So I think we can be fairly sure that there is an independent effect of azathioprine, mecaptopurine, and methotrexate. How big that effect is if someone is taking those drugs on their own, we just do not know because we have not studied that. Um, so I think it's reasonable to assume there is maybe some effect there, but probably it's a bit lower than the effect that we see with anti-TNF drugs and lower than patients who are on both an anti-TNF and immune modulator together. When it comes to other drugs, really, we don't know. Ustekinumab stellara or tofacitinib zelgans, we don't have any data to support that within the Clarity study. We are now funded and are about to launch um, a parallel study um, to Clarity IBD called the VIP study that Nick Powell is leading um, in Imperial, but with the same project management team, where we will study um, astakinumab, we'll study immunomodulators on their own, we'll study adalimab, we'll study um, tofacitinib. And in this study, we're going to target people just after the second dose of the vaccine, because that's where we really want to know what the impact has been. And we'll do a series of mechanistic studies looking at um, not just antibodies, but also T cell responses, etc. And the one thing I would add to that is that there are other groups, um, like our group in Calgary is doing a very similar study looking at many different drug classes. We expect to have that data out our first kind of cut of the vaccine data in the summer of, of this year um, to help kind of fill in some of the gaps. Additionally, the group in Mount Sinai in New York um, recently published in gastroenterology um, a study. Now in, in the US, the US has had an ample supply of vaccine. And yeah. so 
there hasn't been an issue with timing between first and second dose. And the data from the US, um, looking at a number of different biologics, and they included both um, anti-TNFs uh, like, in, like infliximab as well as betaluzumab, as well as uh, Stelera. Um, and all of the, their data, if you get the dose from zero and four weeks later, these were all mRNA-based vaccines and all essentially had high antibody titers post-vaccine, um, and that included patients with Stelera. Now, the only um, kind of challenge with the, the US data is it's a much smaller sample size as compared to the huge study that was published in the UK. So I still think we need a bit more time to get greater clarity on, on some of these other drugs. Yeah, agree with all that, Gil.